Okay, we are starting recording right now. Cool. I think we are ready. So this is Fungi. Uh, I just wrote... Uh, this is my first time doing this. This is going to be a live coding session. We'll see how this goes. Uh, part of this is just to get myself familiar and ready to kind of stream. So maybe you'll find this entertaining, maybe you won't. Um, but this is my personal programming language that I'm writing uh, called Fungi. It's part of the Sibboot project. You can check them out at sibboot.org and uh, Fungi. Uh, I have a blog post. I just wrote kind of giving an intro of Fungi. Uh, eventually I want to do a podcast as well, which I won't do today. Uh, but you can go to sibboot.org. And if you go into uh, blog, uh, the Fungi intro can give you an introduction to the language. Uh, just real quick, some of the main things, it's, it's kind of C syntax. Uh, it's implemented very few lines of code, about 3,000 lines of code. Um, it has structs, types, it has data inheritance, or uh, like light version of single inheritance, uh, interfaces, uh, what they're called roles in Fungi. I haven't yet implemented the roles. I might be doing that today, let's see. Uh, and then it has something called sin functions, which are super powerful macros, basically. So let's uh, get into it. I'm going to just be implementing a feature in Fungi today. Uh, that's what I hope to do. Uh, I'm not actually even 100% sure which feature it will be. Uh, let's see where we're at. So uh, there we go. Uh, so first. I started implementing, oh yes, that's right, I'm going to be implementing the arena stack. So one of the things in Fungi is there's a concept of arenas, which are arena allocators. I don't know if you're familiar. Well, allocators are how you get memory. Uh, they have basically a free, and or an allocate, or an alloc, and a free method. Alloc gets memory, the free frees memory. Uh, and we use arenas, which means that not only can you allocate memory from the arena and free memory back to the arena, you can drop the entire arena. You can free the entire arena at once. Um, and we have to implement an arena stack because uh, in some APIs, it's better to have kind of an implicit arena be used. And that implicit arena is going to be tied to a thread. Uh, and it's going to be a stack on that thread. Um, so let's go to fungi.h. Okay, we have our arena stack here. That's not what we're going to do, actually. We're going to do an SL arena, a singly linked list. Uh, and in C, you have to also name the struct. Uh, so this is going to be the next. And, and then we are going to have a pointer to the arena. Or no, it's going to be the whole arena. Uh, arena. So this is our single link plus arena, and, and right now you can kind of see, uh, we're, we're in C right now, but it's just worth pointing out, uh, this is an SLL, a single link list. It has a next, and the way I define it in C is it has a data as well, since C doesn't have inheritance anyway, I decided to just throw the data on there anyway, because who has an SLL without having data on it? A single link list without data. but. You can safely convert, you can, all the SLL stuff only at really accesses the next. And so you can safely convert uh, the dick struct, or the dick stack here. Oops, not the dick stack alone. The SLL arena into an SLL, and then call SLL, SLL functions, like SLL add, pop, or length, right? Because those just traverse the singly linked list nodes. Um, and that's kind of something that fungi does automatically, but that's kind of a separate point. Uh, so we're getting into the SLL arena, and this thing is going to be attached not just to the, um, this thing is going to be globally available, and it's going to be tied to a certain fiber. So where should that go? That's the execution pointer. Um, I think it goes directly underneath the fiber, probably the right spot to put it. Uh, so SLL arena, and this is the root. This is the global arena. <laughs> so that can be null. Um, 
meaning there's no SLL, or it can be something else, meaning there is an SLL. Okay. <sighs> okay, so that's pretty much it. The only other thing we want to implement here is um, static inline SLL, SL arena as SLL. And like I just said, you can safely convert um, an SL arena to an SLL pointer. And this kind of uh, gives that at type time uh, so that you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah. So the place that we're going to use this, the primary place that we're going to use this is in strings. Let's see if I wrote that up. Uh, I can't remember if I opened an issue for this or not. Yes, I did. Perfect. So this is our arena stack and the strings issue. I point out that we, um, there are two APIs for allocators. Here, let me make this a little bigger. Um, you either pass the allocator to the function explicitly. So you may call foo with my allocator and some va values, or you implicitly use a global allocator, like one, two, three. There's also the other approach of you pass all the data in ahead of time and then it uh, adds to it. And that's, that's uh, that's what C does. C most APIs is required to preallocate the space. Um, for ones that don't require this, they need to use a global allocator. Um, so first of all, Arena is an interface or a role in Fungi, <laughs> uh, which allows us to swap in different arenas. The base one is just four kilobyte blocks, and it basically allocates and frees uh, with a bump allocator pushes it it allocates some stuff and then when you de when you free it it frees it um, so in fungi strings we kind of have this problem where I want to write a string like this at compile time and this data needs to be stored somewhere while it's being compiled uh, I guess first of all fungi is a single pass compiler that compiles one token at a time and actually compiles it. It doesn't construct an AST, it compiles it to code. So when it sees the string, it has to compile it somewhere. Um, if it compiles it to the code, then it has to also compile some kind of jump over it because you don't want to start compiling the string something at non-immediate time. That's not gonna work well. So we gotta store it somewhere, which is fine. You know, maybe we could have a separate allocator or something, that's fine. It's great. But then in this case, you have the dollar sign here, and that indicates that this is being run immediately. So we're logging this info at like compile time. Well, you don't want to be, um, you don't want to be storing this string permanently when it's only being printed at compile time. So that needs a new allocator reserved. But what allocator? You're not specifying an allocator here. So you need a global allocator. And that's kind of the reasoning here. Now, a global allocator gets into all of the problems with C, and it, it, it means that our block fork allocator won't work anymore very well because, uh, for a lot of reasons, but uh, if they're running on embedded targets, you're gonna run out of memory eventually uh, because memory fragmentation is a problem. In modern programming, you don't have to worry about memory fragmentation. In fungi, and fungi environments, SIB boot environments, you do have to worry about memory fragmentation. We have to be able to, basically, and the, the solution for memory fragmentation is drop the arenas. You have to be able to drop your arenas, or you have to have some kind of memory fragmentation strategy. Um, but if, if your arena is going to be dropped, you don't have to worry about memory fragmentation. All the blocks will be cleared and returned to the block allocator, and everything will be fine. So um, we need to be able, that global allocator, we need to be able to replace it with another allocator. And so that's, what, that's why we have the, uh, the stack. Uh, so the arena stack allows us to push a new arena before calling a function. And frequently this arena, this new arena, will be a local variable in the function. And basically what this lets you do is it lets you reserve an arena, call some function that makes a bunch of allocations uh, into that arena you reserved. And when it returns, you then have a bunch of data in that arena. 
you can pop the arena off the allocator stack, but the arena's still there. And now you can move whatever data you need and drop the whole arena. And that's the that's the basic strategy. Um, yeah. So what we're really trying to implement here is not arenas per se. We're trying to implement strings, and we need to we want to do this in a, in a way that's architecturally sound with the rest of the language. Um, uh, so this is called n pipe i.e. a slice literal, a string, aka this, this is a string. Um, so as I said here, we need to use an allocator stack for this. Um, I think I have a, I think I have a macro. It's been a while since I used the fiber. FB, K slash FB. Yeah, I'll just use that. So we're going to just uh, create an arena here. Uh, what arena do we want? Uh, BBA. BBA is a block. Block bump arena, like I said. It's a bump allocator uh, that uses blocks underneath it. This is the block allocator underneath it. So we're gonna make a BBA. Um, and the BBA just needs to take a BA, which we have, uh, it's been a while since I wrote this code, kind of code. Uh, where is our BA? Oh, the root BA. The root BA is in the. I think it's in the sieve. Yeah, it's in the sieve. Just to make sure that I actually sieved up here. Yeah. Oh, here it is. There. Uh, there. There, I'm doing it. That's how you make a BBA. I forgot. Um, so we make our BBA. So that uses the BA as the underlying block allocator. And then we are going to make our SSL or BB or SSL uh, arena is going to equal as arena. Um, arena equals BBA as arena. Right. Perfect. Okay, so This is uh, SSL Arena. There we go. Okay, that compiles. Giving me a civil warning there. Um, I wonder if I can. Huh. Oh, and then I'm going to add the SSL Arena to the kernel. So. Uh, SSL add. Um, so yeah, let's let's make this. So this is the fiber, right? 
let's make a FN Fiber Add Arena. Um, and this is going to take uh, just Arena. nothing and this will use the kernel the fn fiber instead of .h. We'll just call this add arena. Uh, K, F, B, and then what did I just say? Arena. So that's, that's our root. We want to call SSL add. Um, and that's our root. Uh, and we want to add uh, SSL arena as SSL. I didn't like something there. Oh, this is an SSL arena. Okay. Cool. Uh, go back to fungi.c. We'll go add arena. K. Arena. We'll just call this arena as well. Good. And we're going to need a pop arena as well. Let's call this SSL arena add. And this is only a pop. And we don't need to actually use the value here. And this is going to be SSL pop. Again, it's just that. Uh, but we are casting it. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, let's just assert this for fun as well. Okay. So. Actually, let's do it. Theoretically, the caller could do something weird here, so let's uh, actually have a, an assert with an error message. Um, pipe arena is missing. <sighs> um, cool, so we're adding it, and then we're popping it. So we need to actually <coughs> do the logic here. And let's just call that store string for now. Um, call it slice store slice u1. Call it parse slice u1. Why not? And the yeah. So there's multiple ways we could do this. We're gonna go with the simplest way for now. Don't don't optimize until later. Is always a good idea. So we're gonna get our arena.
right? Arena equals um, let's call it just going to be K fiber uh, arena arena right that's going to be the reference to that so that's you know it's kind of long but uh, this is a dot actually Um, so that's our arena while we're doing stuff here. Um, now let's look at the civ.h. Um, these are our methods for the arena. Um, we have allocate free, so allocate takes in the arena. So we're going to do, uh, oh, right. Um, was it XM? XR. Right, XR arena top. Um, and this needs to be dereferenced, actually. Um, I'll, get, I'll tell you what this does in a second. So we need to allocate. We're going to just do 512 for now, 512 alignment one. So what we're doing here is we're just going to align, we're just going to allocate, um, bound define string size uh, max 512. So XR is just a macro instead of dot H. Um, which it basically uh, handles uh, interfaces. So arena is an interface. So if you pass in the interface, um, there it is. If you pass in the interface and the method name, it looks for the method name in the interfaces dot M, which is the uh, pointer to the methods, to the name, and then it passes in the data automatically, and then it passes it in the arguments. Very simple macro that uh, basically let's just call interfaces. Um, so, and this returns some data. Uh, so, I know this, yeah, this is data equals that. And so our buff B is going to equal uh, data. Oh, and actually, I think I have, I have a helper for this as well. Buff new. Yes, I do. So, I should have just done that. I haven't used these in a while. Uh, buff B equals buff new arena top. And that's dereferenced. Because uh, arenas always pass in uh, the number of pointers. Because they're just, they're just two pointers. So, there's no reason to use pointers for them. Uh, and then the, the cap is string max. Cool. Uh, so that's our buffer. And we're going to use this car next escape repeatedly uh, to find our, what we're looking for here. So we're going to do well true. Uh, we'll do bool no, we're gonna do car next escape equals zero, and we'll do let's see. 
by the way, Carnex Escape is just a really simple structure. Uh, it has value C, which is the character, and whether it's an unknown escape or not. Um, well, C. Ooh, this is interesting. Well, C does not equal that. An unknown escape. So I want to do this well. That uh, this pipe is not escaped. Equals false. If no escape is true, then. Um, If unknown escape is true, then we're going to, um, we're actually going to treat it as a regular character. Um, I don't really like this either. I'm just going to do this, and then we can handle that as a case. Uh, C equals car next escape. Okay. Oh, and then I pass in my buffer here. So it's going to freely write this information onto our buffer. Oh no, this is the reader. Right. Never mind. We're going to do the same thing that they did up there. Just kg.source. That's our source reader. Um, if uh, c equals and c, c dot c, sorry. Known escape is false. Then uh, we're going to need to move the token to here. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's. Let's see, how does this work? Anything we have has already been pulled off of the reader, I believe. Yeah. Um, anything we have has already been pulled off the reader. So I think we just return. What tests are for. So that's the end state. I'll break for now. Maybe there's something else I want to do here. Actually, there probably there's definitely something else I want to do here. So that's the end of our loop. Um, else, if un here, let's do this. If c dot unknown escape. Then we're just going to do b dot add buff add b. Um, this means that the car next escape didn't recognize this character as an escape value, but we recognize it. We recognize that it's an escaping uh, a pipe. Um, otherwise, we're going to break. Okay. So that's what we do if it's a pipe. If c dot c equals space um, so there's a few things we can do here so I think the simplest thing is if we have a bool ignoring white space um, you might want to write a string that looks like this. Hello. Or you, you know, you might want to say something like x. No, you're in a function. You say x equals this. Foo bar. Bazbob. Blah, blah. Right. And it's it's nice for 
to be able to use enter and all that. And that's and this and this syntax supports that. But all this leading white space, you don't want that typically. Now, if you do want that, you can freely escape it. And now there'll little be literally be two white spaces here. But if you don't escape it, then the leading white space is, is deleted. So if we're ignoring white space. Uh, we're just going to continue. Uh, so if unknown escape then we're going to do nothing. And you'll see why in a second. Um, Else here. Um, actually, this we're just going to do this. We're going to be adding the actual character later. So this, all this does is add that character. It's not like a special, special sauce or anything. So that's fine. The end of this loop is going to be buff add okay so that you can see that um, if it's an unknown escape then we're just adding a character so which we'll do at the bottom if we're ignoring white space we're not adding any characters right now we continue um, uh, don't think new lines are special. So this auto converts the new lines tab spaces. Uh -huh. Yeah. Otherwise, we're no longer ignoring white space. Ah. So if it's a new line, then ignoring white becomes true. We're going to start ignoring white space. Else, ignoring white is false. Right. Oh, we also have to handle other unknown escapes. Just handle that here actually. Assert not C dot unknown. So, sorry about that. So, yeah, we can assert that it's it's not an unknown escape otherwise. Uh, oh no, I'm not setting a known escape up here. So I think I think I want to do it here. Else, if c dot un escape uh, set air slice. So if the, it's a new line, we're ignoring white space. Else, we're not. We're just going to stop ignoring white space. Start ignoring white space, or we're going to stop ignoring white space. Perfect. Oh, interesting. We need to stop ignoring in that on that spot as well. That's kind of a really special case. Yeah. 
Okay, I think that all looks good. So that will add any items to the buffer and we'll get to the end of the string. Um, I think we return the buffer. We also need to free anything that's left. So um, I think this should be in Civ, actually. I think I do this at least one of our other plays, and it's kind of an annoying thing. Static pool buff free end. Um, uh, so we want to free B data plus B length, right? And we want to free B cap minus B length. Perfect. This is the pointer we're freeing. This is the size that we're freeing. That looks good. So we're going to do that. Buff free end. Uh, B. Arena top. And then we return the buffer. Oh. We're going to set. Oh, this probably shouldn't be in line. Turn that out. I think I can do that here, actually.
so what are we doing here? So, so pointer. Really? Arena's a pointer. That's a point. Okay. I think it's a pointer. It doesn't seem like it thinks it's a pointer. I guess it's a little arena as a pointer. Okay, anyway. That makes sense, I'm right. So, yeah, this should be reasonable, I think. So, uh, now we need to register it. So, it's gonna be that, it has one character in it. It's kind of annoying to register it, but it's a sync function. Pipe and it has. Here, one second, I'll be right back. It's a sing function. Oh, speaking of, it's a sing function. Oh, yeah, we're checking the immediate everything and we're calling all that. Okay. We are not ready yet. We've added the arena, we've popped the arena. We've done all that. Um, parse a slice, you won. Alright, 
We have our buffer. Great. That's all great. Okay. Okay, actually, this is wrong. We don't need to do this here. Uh, that is part of something else. We need to do that in current init. There needs to be a base SLL arena in globals. Turn a net. The FN fiber. Fiber net. That gets allocated. Yeah. Right. But we need to do fiber.ssl arena equals k. I'm doing this a little backwards. No, I'm not. Yeah, we're going to need the SLL. As well. I think these go straight on kernel. Okay, so sorry. So this is, this is all initialization code. It's not all that interesting here. Um, just got to get everything correct. So there needs to be a base allocator. That's what I'm doing here. <coughs> we have our BBA. It has a block allocator inside the arena. And then the dot SSL arena itself is an arena. All right, it's it's. I just have this code. There it is. Um, I don't really feel. Oh no, that's fine. So, Arena. B. 
the arena is BBDS, this is also arena, and this is going to be and K. Wow, it's not like that. Two or three. Let's do this on the time here. Something's not right here. Uh, not even using this yet. It is really unhappy about something. Uh, I guess. deleted. That would do it. Cool. We'll put that down there. Alright. Uh, BBA SSL. I had a semicolon here, and the error was, I guess, slightly helpful. It was, like, it was pointing to the right character. I didn't read it correctly, I guess. All right, anyway. <sighs> so I, I did a little bit of extra work here, which is fine. Um, just to get back to what we were doing, we're implementing end pipe. So this actually only needs to happen for as immediate. basically supporting as the media already, so I might as well take that away. Um, if Actually, we never need to do this. If if somebody wants us to get rid of strings like the log that info, and they're running at immediate time, they need to they need to do essentially what we've done here. Um, let's put this in notes. Notes handling strings right here. I'll just. this to the, the bug as a note to future self.
anything that needs to. Fair amount of time. It's nice to leave myself a little little note. I know where to look for it, hopefully. Alright. Sorry about that. So I went on a few tangents there. I think that I think that will be useful eventually. Uh, but basically, we're just gonna use the SSL arena. We're not gonna allocate anything for this. Um, and we don't care if it's called as immediately, or we do, because um, this is going to be a slice, actually. those things uh, but not not their types so we don't want to be calling doing type call here um, which is what which is what literal does here Should be a string. So what does this do? We get whether this is an immediate function that's from the compiler. We're going to type out here. We're going to get the code address and we're going to parse this slice. It's an immediate. We're going to parse the slice. This could just be done here, actually. I'm not using the stack at all. Alright, we're going to parse the slice. Here, code um, We're going to first parse the slice, which is up here. That just walks the characters, uh, pushing them onto a buffer. There's different ways we could do this. This is the easiest way. We could honestly use the arena here directly and allocate one character at a time. I don't think that's worth it. And that would only work with specific arenas. This would work with all arenas. Um, we're going to have to have some way to allocate larger strings. I think that's going to be a special syntax. Like long string or something. 512 is plenty. I'm not worried about it. Um, 
I have trouble with 20 plenty for most use cases. Honestly, I think 256. Ah, uh, 5 troll. Let's give it 5 troll for now. That's kind of what code allocates as well. So anyway, we get that, that slice, which is in the arena. And if we're running at immediate time, we push it onto the stack, push the slice onto the stack. And if we're not running at immediate time, we compile the slice uh, address. Uh, this is going to have to be fixed eventually to include a type information. And actually, I talk about that here. This is a pointer to internal data. Uh, when we compile this to native code, we're going to have to know how long that data is. Um, I don't have a clear way to do this yet. But for now, this is good enough. It'll be a raw pointer. Which is fine. I think I'm gonna have to come up with a different thing than lit for internal data. Um, something like that. <sighs> for basically, uh, it's gonna be a, something different than lit. It's gonna be like kind of like globals, uh, which also has uh, information on data size, basically. It's gonna have a linked list of how to look up who owns what and how much they own so that we can move data around later. But that's not important right now. What is important right now is that we have a string. Uh, and I think we commented this out because there were random compiler errors. Let's make sure we can run. Ah. I did need to get as immediate. Okay. Alright. Alright, let's test. That's what you do. You write it and you test. Um, this is pretty much... We're gonna do this here. So these are our tests. It's not the greatest structure. It's worked uh, well so far. Slice you one. Yeah. So we're just going to allocate a simple string here, and we're going to compare it. using our C functions to do it. Um, and I just realized that I need the slice E1 type and the array type to do it. And not the array type, the slice E1 type. So that's fine. Uh, Call this call this get slice and it's gonna return slice. Not too complicated there. Uh, and it's gonna return I have to tell you say return. Hello slice. Get slice. Um, top two, you two. We're gonna call this s dot u two length, and we're gonna do search slice equal uh, slice. Dat and length. 
slice. Little slice. Make sure those two slices are equal. Uh, pass three to marks, takes two. Okay. Uh, I think it doesn't. The C's macro syntax isn't like this. That, so I'm only passing it too. I don't know. That's weird. Compatible types. Swing string. Really doesn't like something. I see. I am. Right. Oops. This is just hello slice. Seg fault. Good. Pile type that. You seg faulted and parse slice you one. Okay. By the way, these are we partly we seg faulted on two one one nine. Says to me that the arena is probably dead somehow or incorrect. Supposed to be a pointer. <laughs> I should get in the habit of using P for for this because that's the pointer. Um, uh, arena is four. That's not right. do it.
necessarily an element directly into K. Here's a pointer. Okay, I got a stack underflow. Quite a bit of stuff got run. Running test dot. Uh, we're at 555. Oh, this is a git slice. Not you slice. Ta da! Works. So that's a feature. That was fun to implement. Um, we now have strings, both immediate and non-immediate, and they work on a dictionary stack. Or not a dictionary stack, uh, an arena stack. An arena stack is something I've wanted to add for a long time, so it's good to add that as well. Um, let's look at the difference here. Um, so we have to initialize a new base arena for the compiler for things like strings, but it's going to be usable for lots of other things. I believe lots of stuff might want to allocate some stuff to make available as a global. Globals, for instance. Um, if you're initializing a global variable uh, to be used by the, uh, to be held statically, you're going to want to put it on here as well. Um, and this bug, issue number 24, talks about that as well. Um, what else did we add here? Well, let's look at the H file first. So, type-wise, we added an SL, SLL arena and some and a conversion function, which we added to the kernel structure. So we added it to the fiber structure and the kernel structure. And we added the ability to add it and pop it from the kernel, as well as get the top, the current uh, arena. Um, then we added a way to parse a string which is this one. Now this is this one's implemented in C. We could have actually done all of this in theory in fungi. The reason I didn't is because strings are fundamental to being able to debug your application, providing assertions, all sorts of stuff. You want to implement it in a language that's already working and when you're implementing things in fungi, well, it's great that you can implement the language in the language, and I could start doing that. I could start bootstrapping it directly in the language, but um, there's no reason to do that at this moment, especially not something for something so vital as strings. Strings are how you debug your application. You want them to work. So you implement them in, in the version of the language that you know works. So in this case, C is the language that I know works. Fungi is still under development. But once Fungi is complete, I will be writing the Bootstrap compiler in Fungi anyway, and this will be uh, compiled to native code, which is fine, which is good. And it can be well tested there. Um, maybe I'll move it out at that point. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we parse a string. It took about you know, 20 lines of code. And we implement the pipe, which just parses the string, gets the slice. This parse string, I might repurpose this, turn that into a function where you pass the buffer into it and it parses. That's a possibility. Um, not super critical either way. Uh, yeah, and it can either add it directly to the stack if it's immediate, or it can... Um, Compile the values. Either way, it updates the type stack. And that's, that's our recording here.